Uh, good morning to everybody watching and to all the participants in today's COVID-19 public health meeting. As leaders, we appreciate the hearing updates from our public health professionals, professionals as well as our health systems. I know the residents of the Metro learn a lot from you and know what's going on in our community. With that, I'd like to introduce Director of Fargo Cast Public Health, Desi Fleming, to provide an update. COVID cases in Cass County continue to increase at a rate of about eight to 12 new cases per day. Um, as of yesterday, we had about 123 positive in this in our county. Um, we know that we are the leading county in the state for positive cases, but we also know that we have the highest population, so that's not really surprising for many of us. Um, we have, although we do have some community spread cases, we also, most of our new cases have been close contacts to positive cases that we have identified through contact tracing. Um, assisting the North Dakota Department of Health with the contact tracing efforts continues to be the largest operation that we are participating in in this pandemic. We have currently 21 staff that are covering 12 hours a day for contact tracing efforts. And we're planning for some higher numbers in the next couple of weeks, given the modeling and projected peaks. Um, we do know, however, that once we peak in cases, that it's not just going to go away and that we are going to have to have a gradual um, return to normalcy at some point, so we will adjust our efforts accordingly. Uh, as we continue to do more testing for COVID in our area, we're likely going to find some um, clusters of positives in particular groups or settings where it might be beneficial to do some focused or targeted testing efforts. So the North Dakota Department of Health has used this strategy in some congregate living facilities in our area. And the purpose of this is to kind of identify those more positive cases so that we can take appropriate measures to lessen the likelihood of further exposures and to stop that spread within that group or facility. Uh, the North Dakota Department of Health Operations Center is finalizing their supportive plan uh, this week for those individuals who would need isolation or quarantine for COVID and don't have um, a permanent home or don't have a safe place for housing. So up to this point, we have been doing some local efforts to coordinate this, which has been challenging while we're waiting for the state plan. Uh, this plan will be offered in the eight larger cities across our state, including our community and we'll have support services arranged such as um, transportation, food, health, lodging, um, behavioral health, kind of a wraparound services. So referrals for this um, plan would come from public health, would come from shelters, would come from medical facilities. Um, I believe that Thursday afternoon will be the formal announcement of this from the state. And just one general public health messaging part to close. Uh, as our weather warms up, as um, more people are spending time as outdoors, we still need to keep in mind that uh, physical distancing and gathering rules still apply. So while we encourage people to stay physically active and enjoy the outdoors, we still need to be really aware of our surroundings. So remember to maintain that six foot distancing between you and others, whether you're inside or out. Um, also remember that COVID virus and a variety of other germs live on hard surfaces for an extended period of time. So if you are out in public, it's a really good idea to have your hand sanitizers, to have um, sanitizing wipes available if you would need to. Also, when you get back home, to wash your hands thoroughly with soap and water when you are able to. And as always, right now, we're still recommending stay close to home stay um, within your family unit or the folks that you've been around for the past several weeks. Uh, wear your cloth masks when you can't have that physical distancing space. Um, wash your hands frequently, clean and disinfect surfaces routinely. And if you are an essential worker, please, if you're feeling unwell, stay home from work. Thanks. Thank you, Desi. Next, we have Clay Clowney, Public Health. Kathy McKay to speak. So thank you very much. Some additional efforts that on uh, for Clay County Public Health. We are activating um, public health nurses to be liaisons to our long-term care and congregate living facilities. They um, need support in coordinating some of their response efforts. So we have nurses dedicated to just reaching out to those facilities on a regular basis. 
Um, we're also working um, and have um, finalizing our plans for those that are homeless, working on some um, plans with the shelter in our community to determine um, placement for those that may be symptomatic or have um, or that are COVID positive. So we have some planning in place that we have um, a location and facility where those can be placed. Um, the Minnesota governor um, declared that COVID-19 pandemic emergency executive order was extended through May 13th. That's a bit different than the stay at home order. This is a peacetime emergency order. It provides the governor uh, tools to respond to the threat of COVID-19, some economic relief to those impacted by the crisis. He can activate the National Guard to assist in relief efforts, um, et cetera. Um, the Minnesota stay at home order um, is just one, one part of that. He had mentioned those that have lake places. The governor um, recommends staying at your primary residence during this time to avoid overtaxing those rural medical facilities in those areas where your lake homes are. Um, other updates, um, we have received new guidance from the Department of Health for those that are providing non-medical visits. Now those would be visits um, to individuals who are isolated, who are elderly, are vulnerable, and are needing to, uh, support and resources from someone. So the, the guidance um, recommends basically the same information that we talk about is uh, you go individually to that person's home, but before you visit, you ensure that they are not experiencing any um, flu-like, cold-like symptoms. Um, and if so, you need to evaluate um, whether you need to visit at that time. Keep the visits short and maintain that six foot distancing as we all talk about when you're connecting directly to that individual. Eye contact is essential in the absence of um, physical contact, obviously. Try to avoid touching items in their home. Wash your hands if you have touched those items or use hand sanitizer if that is not an option. And don't share food or beverages. And wear a cloth mask that uh, pretends, prevents any potential transmission um, by the visitor of any unknown virus that they could be carrying. And if you as the visitor for those homes are experiencing cold-like symptoms or not feeling well, don't go and visit that individual th at that time. Some things you can do, obviously, is make a phone call, send cards or notes in the mail, and drop off supplies um, at their door without any direct contact. We also received additional guidance about faith-based communities to support that social distancing. We know the comfort and support of our faith communities is more important than ever. So keeping the traditions, prayers, and hope that faith communities provide helps us to get through this time of great stress and uncertainty. Reach out to neighbors and faith community members, especially the elderly or the more isolated uh, people to offer fellowship and prayer. We all need to be mindful that this pandemic uh, can bring about anxiety, stress, and fear. So we remind each other, be a light to those around you, be kind, be compassionate, Every day, think of things to be grateful for, be patient and be strong, and greet others with a smile in place of a hug. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. From Essentia Health, we have the Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Rich Fetter. Great, good morning, and thank you for the opportunity to provide an update from Essentia Health. Uh, first, we are pleased to let you know that as of Friday, April 10th, we have started in offering in-house testing uh, for the COVID infection. While this is an important milestone, uh, the testing materials and reagents are still in limited supply. Uh, so we're utilizing these with strict guidelines uh, to meet the acute needs of our most ill and high risk patients. Uh, but it also helps us uh, with the appropriate use uh, of our precious uh, PPE. Our in-house turnaround time is about 45 minutes. But as I mentioned, because of the limited supply, uh, we're still using the North Dakota Department of Health lab that has a turnaround of about 24 to 48 hours. And on the Minnesota side, we're using the Mayo Reference Lab uh, with a turnaround time of about 48 hours to 72 hours. This week, we also implemented universal masking in all of our facilities. Uh, those in direct patient care, uh, we're masking with level one surgical masks, and we're asking our visitors uh, and those not involved in direct patient care 
uh, to utilize cloth masks to reduce the risk to others as a means of source control following the public health advice. Our visitor restrictions remain in place. <clears throat> we realize that these are not, are not ideal, but we're asking our patients and their families for understanding as we work to protect them as well as our staff. We continue to work in earnest on our surge planning. Uh, we are working and coordinating this planning with state and local government and uh, public health officials, as well as other hospitals and health systems such as Sanford Health here in Fargo. Uh, we are working to uh, nearly double our capacity, uh, including our supply space and staff uh, to meet those potential acute needs uh, for, of our communities. Uh, as part of that, we're working to train and redeploy our staff and providers uh, so they can be redeployed to a place that they're most needed uh, as we see that increased number of acutely ill patients. We are actively collaborating with others uh, to enhance the discharge planning process and to find the appropriate disposition uh, for those. Uh, these might include uh, home care uh, or skilled nursing facilities or other uh, alternative options. Uh, we're going to be starting uh, this week, or we are starting this week, to provide outreach to our highest risk patients, those that are older, as well as those with multiple comorbidities, to try to support them in their home with remote monitoring and, vi and virtual or video visits. As a reminder, the warmer weather is coming, and we want to remind everybody that that also means allergy season will be uh, returning. Uh, as the trees and flowers begin to blossom. We know that about 10 to 15% of Americans suffer from hay fever or allergies, and we wanna make sure people understand how they can help differentiate between allergies uh, or possible COVID infection. Some of the symptoms that are similar between uh, both of those would be nasal congestion, sore throat, cough, loss of smell, runny nose. Those that might be more allergy specific are itching, so itchy, watery eyes, sneezing, kind of usual symptoms that most people would be familiar with if they suffer from allergies. And if they get relief from their allergy medications, that would also be a good indication that it's an allergy-related uh, problem. Those symptoms that are consistent with a possible COVID infection would be that are more worrisome would be a fever, shortness of breath, or, or any GI symptoms. Those would not be typically allergy-related. And again, if there's any questions, we want to make sure that uh, people uh, reach out. Um, at Essentia, they can either use an e-visit or virtual visit uh, that's on our, our website, EssentiaHealth.org. Uh, finally, was asked to address what would it take to reopen our economy from a health perspective. Uh, this is a challenging uh, question. I think it's going to require patience. Uh, it's going to have to be, I believe, a gradual process. Uh, it will require increased uh, testing availability uh, and public health surveillance. Uh, our predictive modeling at this time shows that at least directionally, we are continuing to see an increasing trend uh, for acute care needs. And I believe we'd want to see that trend starting to come down uh, before we relax uh, some of the things that we put in place. I think the other thing we'd want to see is decreasing hospitalizations uh, and the need for intensive care beds or uh, ventilator use. I just want to call out that I think the social distancing is working. We see in our uh, modeling uh, that that curve continues to flatten. Uh, which is going to make us all able to be able to care for patients that will need those acute care services. I think one other thing that businesses should be doing if they're not already doing is starting to plan for the future. I think the future is going to look differently, whether it's doing more things virtually, uh, but also figuring out ways to provide their services and products in a way that's much more publicly safe uh, by reducing those social contact, at least for a period of time. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Vetter. Next speaker is Vice President and Medical Officer of Sanford Fargo, Dr. Doug Griffin. Yeah, thank you. I'm uh, grateful for this opportunity to give you an update about uh, how Sanford is protecting our patients and staff and the community during the, uh, this pandemic. Uh, currently, we do have 10 uh, COVID positive patients hospitalized in our facility as of this morning. Four are in critical care on ventilators. We have had several successes with several uh, patients that we've hospitalized, recovered, and been able to be discharged home. We've had uh, 19 employees that have tested positive. All of them are doing well, and many are recovered, and all have recovered at home. I want to, if none of them have actually contracted uh, COVID via direct care of a patient with COVID. It's all been community transmission uh, or with another contact. 
Testing, uh, our rapid testing, uh, which we announced previously, continues to work well. That's uh, dedicated for those uh, at highest risk, our inpatients, uh, healthcare workers, uh, long-term care residents with, uh, with symptoms that turnaround times around 90 minutes. Uh, our drive-through testing is, continues to go well. We average just shy of 70 tests a day. Uh, that's up uh, from uh, 20 a day when we started a few weeks ago. Um, as we prepare, right now we are, uh, feel we're very well prepared to handle the number of the patients that we have coming in, and our staff is really doing a great uh, job caring for them. Going forward, every day we get new information uh, about, uh, that helps us better predict the, the surge. We have um, the benefits in this area of the country of being uh, kind of the last parts of the country to be hit uh, the hardest, and so we can learn from all those uh, other areas that uh, are experiencing surges uh, before us. Um, what we're seeing this week is our surge seems to be less than we initially expected, and I would agree that I think some of the social distancing measures seem to be uh, helpful. Uh, and we hope this uh, translates into a lower than expected surge, but it's still a, a bit too soon to say for certainty. The next few weeks will give us critical information. Um, no matter what the final surge outcome uh, might be, our focus is to continue to vigorously plan and prepare and to be ready to ramp up beds as we need them and to always be one step uh, ahead uh, of this virus. Uh, we continue to work closely with the uh, area hospitals, including Essentia, uh, state and local leaders to plan for the surge. I wanted to comment on a, a couple of other things in the news. On Monday, we announced uh, that Sanford Health will lead a uh, comprehensive clinical trial investing, uh, investigating hydroxychloroquine to understand its role in treating and potentially preventing uh, COVID-19. Uh, the controlled study will enroll 2,000 people exposed to COVID-19, including frontline healthcare workers and other high-risk patients in, in our region. So the, COVID has been very challenging because we're taking care of patients with an illness, but right now there are no known uh, treatments uh, proven. And so by doing clinical trials during the pandemic, we are trying to find treatments and therefore uh, help to provide the hope. <clears throat> Mask, uh, as uh, last week, Sanford, uh, much like a sense of mandating all employees with direct patient uh, care are masking uh, for their entire day. And we recommend all uh, non-caregivers -caregiver, use cloth face masks and uh, as they can serve as a barrier for the help prevent the droplet uh, transmission. Uh, and we also began taking temperatures of all Sanford employers before employees uh, before they're allowed to enter our facilities to work. Today, I'm 98.3, just thought I'd share. Uh, donations of cloth and N95 masks, as well as unopened disinfectant wipes are, are much needed and appreciate the, uh, don uh, the outpouring of community uh -huh. donations that we've received. Uh, and your generosity is, is very helpful and means a, a great deal to us. In virtual visits, uh, we also continue to see great success in providing care that we can via video and e-visits for our clinic uh, patients. Last year, uh, in this uh, model, we did less than 100 visits the entire year, and we did near, we're doing nearly 1,000 a day at this point in time. So, um, and so that continues to be uh, going well. And so as a reminder, we're requ requiring and requesting patients to call for appointments before they come in. We can offer them same day appointments uh, via the e-visit or a video visit as well. And then I wanted to comment a little bit on um, uh, advice for businesses, which others have, have commented on before. Uh, this is uh, uh, much as we have been struck in our footprint by what has happened at the Smithfield pork production plant in, uh, in Sioux Falls. And um, many businesses are wondering, and news out of uh, Grand Forks tonight with another uh, organization hit with uh, several people testing positive. So some of the things that businesses that can do, uh, check uh, temperature and symptoms daily before working, uh, wearing face masks at all time, either uh, cloth or medical grade, depending on the situation. Maintain that social distancing, even at lunch and during breaks, and tell employees certainly to stay home when they're not feeling well. Um, and then disinfect everything well, everything that your employees come in contact. Increase those efforts, probably do it multiple times during the day. 
We have uh, up-to-date information on our website, SanfordHealth.org, uh, and uh, you can follow us on social media as well. So I'm very proud and grateful of uh, all of the Sanford physician and staff and all they're doing for our, our patients in this pandemic, and uh, we're truly fortunate uh, for them to be part of this uh, caring for our community. Thank you very much, Dr. Griffin. We've heard from a health system that our public health experts continue social distancing, hand washing, and masks. If everybody continues to do their part in this fight, it'll make a huge difference and help us get our lives back to more normal quickly. Uh, uh, West Fargo President Bernie Dardis and uh, Cass County Chairman Chad Peterson and I had an opportunity to review the uh, with the health uh, department, the models that are coming on and potential reproduction ratio of the COVID virus. And when we went through this, we had the interesting uh, notes that uh, what type of curve happens depending on what we're, we're doing. And uh, we oftentimes ask on the model, how do they do the model and what, what do they think about it? So many of us think about, I've got a graph up that shows a simple, simplistic way in which you do a model trying to figure out how the graph goes. And uh, it seems quite simple, a couple circles, doesn't seem very difficult or very complex. We switched to the next model, and uh, Chad Peterson was the only one that could count how many different influences there are on the model, but you can see there are multiple different influences on a model. So when a model comes out like this, it's always very difficult to say, well, when is it gonna surge, when it's gonna peak, when it's gonna flatten, what's gonna happen? We're looking at four to five different models, like each health system's looking at one, the state's looking at one, and everybody's trying to figure out what happens. But I just wanted to make the public understand that uh, this is one of the reasons you can look at a model sometimes and it looks, holy cow, we flattened, we're doing great. That's not necessarily the truth. So what has to happen is we have to take the uh, advice of the institutions and help us out, figure this out. But uh, I've seen Sanford's model and Essentials model, and they're just as complex. So the other thing we talked about is that uh, if you do distancing, what this can mean to that and I have a chart up there that shows if you do 60% of your population uh, stays pretty flat. If you do 20% of your population, uh, it spikes like a mountain. And that's truly what we don't want to have happen. So this is kind of a breaking it down, making it real simple. And so we say that if we can have people committed to this effort, this will make the real changes happen in our community. One week ago, alongside with West Fargo Commissioner President Bernie Dardis and with uh, Chairman Chad Peterson, we issued a Stay Home, Save Lives directive. The directive consists of five critical themes. A pandemic is unlikely to any other crisis we've faced. It requires 100% activation. You can be a lifesaver. And let's save our summer. The more we're critical and do the, the things we're supposed to do, the sooner we'll get through this. We the people can end this crisis. That's very true of the data. We think we're proud of South Dakota, North Dakota. We're doing a great job. Now we're starting to see some of the companies that come along that have little surges, but can we keep the surge down and flatten the curve? The major focus of the city right now has been on the young people. The last time we had a briefing, it was reported that 55% of the cases that we had were under the age of 40. I'm happy to say that people seem to be paying attention because now it's 45% of our people that are catching COVID virus are under 40. So we feel the young are listening. We're showing some progress in this and we're starting to flatten the curve in that age group. We're uh, not done yet, but as summer comes along or spring comes along, we're gonna have to be more vigilant not to have that happen. And very pleased that many of the stores now are wearing masks, employees are given masks. There are different ways people are becoming much more alert to what's happening. We cannot halt the spread of COVID-19 without your help, so please do your part. Now I'd like to introduce West Fargo Commissioner President Bernie Dardis, who will be joining us remotely. Bernie? Good morning. Thank you, Mayor Mahoney. Uh, I think that there's one thing that we need to emphasize, and that's some of the work that uh, Mrs. Fleming and her team is doing with regard to the CAS Public Health and their contact tracing. That's an unseen uh, critical uh, process that's going on that the public doesn't see. And I, you know, the, uh, Governor Burgum and uh, public health has been working very hard on that. So once they come in contact with people, uh, they're able to identify who they've come in contact with. And I think that that's helping a great deal too. The city of West Fargo is extending our closure and work from home directives through May 1st. 
uh, essential services will remain in operation. Uh, emergency services, sanitation, streets, sewer, water, maintenance, as well as uh, policing and utility billing is all ongoing. Uh, Cass County and the city of West Fargo and Fargo has set up a unified command, uh, review information, and work on uh, sending out messaging to keep the public informed. Uh, we're also working on a phased approach to return to normal. Uh, we've reached out to the, the business community and asked for some of their suggestions, as well as uh, what they're willing to do in order to try and get us back to normal uh, and all of those uh, things that are important. Uh, I'd also like to thank uh, uh, the healthcare professionals, public works, for all the work that they're doing. They're frontline people. They're putting their uh, health at risk, and yet they continue to do that for the safety of our public, and I'm very, very grateful for that. I've noticed in the last week and a half that uh, many more store employees, as well as the public, are wearing more masks, they're wearing more gloves, and they're more sensitive to the six-foot distancing, and so we're very grateful. If we continue to follow the suggestions of the CDC, our healthcare professionals, our public health officials, that is the ticket, if you will, that will get us back to some normalcy in our lives. There's other things, one other thing to note and uh, uh, that was mentioned a little bit earlier is the great public support of providing masks and protect, uh, protective clothing, the donations, as well as corporate partners that are stepping up. I think that's just fantastic. So, again, uh, the outcome of this is continues to be in the public's hand in the sense that if we follow the rules, we follow the protocols, we'll be in a much better place. Thank you. Thank you, Mary, Mayor Dardis. Our next speaker is Moorhead Mayor Jonathan Judd. Good morning. Good morning, Mayor Judd. Uh, to my microphone here. Again, good morning, Mayor Tim and everyone. Uh, thank you again for, uh, for hosting this uh, event. I wanted to give a, uh, uh, some brief uh, follow-up here uh, regarding what's going on on the Minnesota side. Uh, Governor Wall's stay-at-home order has been extended to May 4th, and uh, there is a bit about business and employee resources. Uh, this is also pretty hot off the presses. Uh, I, I did speak with uh, Governor Walls this morning. Uh, he does send his, uh, his well wishes and support for what's going on in the Red River Valley region. My understanding is, generally speaking, <clears throat> there may be some favorable, uh, excuse me, modifications to that stay-at-home order that may uh, help certain businesses. So stay tuned for that. I don't want to get too much into the weeds about what that entails, but there may be some modifications coming out within the next week that may be help helpful to our small businesses. Uh, also, uh, I, on that note, I'll also follow up that uh, Senator Amy Klobuchar did reach out uh, last week. And just so for those of you who have been sending me a variety of uh, emails, texts, phone calls, uh, I want you to know that I do take them seriously. Uh, I have uh, forwarded that information on to city staff, but I've also had conversations with Senator Amy, Representative Lean, and Governor Walls this morning about the, the concerns uh, that people have brought up about how the certain policies uh, are adversely affecting uh, our businesses and our residents, but I also spoke about the positive things that are coming out of these orders as well. So continue to share that information with me. Um, I will get that information to the appropriate folks uh, that may be able to be to have the power to uh, make and create legislation that may be more bene beneficial, uh, that will be helpful to, uh, the, to, to the city, the businesses, and our residents. Uh, also, I want to give a shout out to uh, the mayors of uh, Dilworth, Mayor Olson, Mayor Johnson of Glendon, Mayor uh, Rick of Burnsville, and also Mayor Joy of uh, Holly. We did have a conversation uh, last week about how things are going on in those jurisdictions. My understanding is things are going well. So uh, for those uh, residents uh, there, your mayors are looking out for you. Uh, they do appreciate the fact that the folks uh, within those uh, cities are following the social distancing rules 
kids have stopped playing basketball outside, and so that's greatly uh, appreciated. And we again implore you to be that neighborhood parent to make sure that our kids are abiding by those rules. Also, we would like for our folks to be aware uh, uh, that uh, city and <clears throat> excuse me state websites uh, continue to provide timely information about public health impacts and recommendations, as well as reliable data. Uh, please be aware of the scammers that are out there. Uh, we are seeing an uptick in that uh, and referrals for uh, employees, businesses, students, housing concerns, and more. Uh, the city websites and state websites will have that information, but please be aware of those websites that attempt to scam folks into giving you uh, false data, false information, and also collecting your, your private and personal in information. Also, I think we have, have, this, have this matter resolved, but please also remember that uh, North Dakota and Minnesota residents can travel across uh, the state border uh, for work and other essential purposes under their respective state guidelines, but also to respect social distancing requirements. I think the only thing I'll add regarding uh, city business also, I, uh, two things, I actually. Uh, one, uh, from Mayor Olson in Dilworth, for those Dilworth businesses to be aware that uh, there is currently a revolving loan fund that has been set up to help Dilworth businesses. There is currently $100,000 available at a 0% rate interest. Also, I reached out to uh, Superintendent Brennan Lunick, who also just wants to briefly report that distance learning is going well in Moorhead. He is extremely proud of staff and the community uh, for the efforts. Uh, and I want to send a special shout out to the teachers. I know they had to learn how to provide distance learning in a really short uh, amount of time. And so I can uh, definitely say that things have been going well. It's been interesting with my three kids because they're all taking up all the office space in the house, but at least they're getting their schoolwork done. So I'm greatly appreciative uh, for the uh, families that have been supportive of our teachers for that effort. I think other than that, I just want to give a special shout out again to all the folks in, uh, in the city of Moorhead. Um, I know that uh, things are going a little dicey for a lot of folks. I know that uh, uh, MSUM is going through some things right now regarding cuts. I want you to know that uh, our hearts are with the uh, families and the MSUM community and the employees there who are going through uh, some tough times on top of dealing with the pandemic. Uh, you know, I want you to know that if there's anything obviously that the uh, city can do, uh, as well as any information that I, I can pass on to folks uh, that, that will be helpful, please let uh, us know. Um, and, and again, I know that there are tough decisions being made in all of our jurisdictions regionally. Um, I know that there's been some discussion about, you know, our jurisdictions conducting business. Uh, what this is going to look like for us in the future regarding budgets and impacts and things of that nature. I do want to send a, a shout out to folks that are in those decision making processes. Uh, we have a lot to think about uh, moving forward. And, and I want you to know that in my conversations with a lot of these folks, uh, we are very sensitive to those uh, issues now and will be in the future. Uh, and so I want you to know that that dialogue about how we move forward is going to be an ongoing, uh, uh, I guess, conversation because uh, we don't know what the impacts are going to be. But I want you to know that we're being very extremely conscientious about what this looks like and how we can have a humane approach uh, to balance out how we do business going forward. So again, I thank you all from Essentia uh, to Sanford for being here, for giving us the, the good data. I do want to send a shout out to Dr. Vetter. Just so folks know, I do suffer from seasonal allergies. I've got my mask. <laughs> and so uh, uh, just so you know, if I am sneezing, have watery eyes, it is because I am a habitual allergy sufferer. So thank you for letting folks know about that. Well, thank you very much, Mayor Judd. Next, we have Cass County uh, Chairman uh, Chad Peterson. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, first, I'll repeat what everyone else says as well. Thank you for everyone self-quarantining. Thank you for those people working at home, and thank you for you taking a social distancing seriously. Thank you to everyone in the room right now with you, Mayor. Uh, obviously, thanks to everyone listening. Thanks to our first responders, our healthcare workers, those people that are at work and those people that aren't. Know that 
All of us are talking about you every day behind your back, and I mean that in positive ways. We're working with the governor, state leadership, local leaders to try to figure out how we can get things back to what may be a new normal, but back to as normal as a situation as we can possibly have. So uh, thank you for your patience, thank you for your tolerance, and thank you for your input. With that, know this. County government is still doing our part. Cass County government is still open by appointment only, and we're providing all our services. Each department is taking its own steps regarding social distancing by working remotely, limiting traffic internally, limiting it externally. So we're trying to do our part to replicate what we're asking you to do. The Cass County Jail has been in the news lately. As always, we are taking all possible precautions to address first responder, our staff, and our inmate concerns to ensure we maintain a safe environment. That is paramount to keep as many people safe as we can when we're uh, in, in charge of what they're doing every day. Human services are still open. Some households participating in the supplemental, supplemental nutrition assistance program, that's SNAP, will be receiving additional funding benefits on their EBT cards, and that should be showing up this month. As I said before, other services are still available. Uh, adult services and programs, child care assistance, uh, temporary assistance to needy families, all the programs are up. All of them are available. We're waiting for your call if you need help. If you want more information on that, hit our website. It's cascountynd.gov backslash, and here's the important important part, economic help. That's actually one word, no space, economic help for detail. Two other points, if I may, Mayor, meetings and elections. First, attendance at our meetings will continue to be, continue to be held remotely. The next sheriff rotational, which is on Monday, and our county commission meeting also on Monday, will be able to be viewed live online. Information on that is is forthcoming. Hopefully, we should have that today, maybe tomorrow. But uh, for the first time in a long time, you'll be able to watch us online. Item two, the primary elections in June. The elections will be conducted solely by mail-in ballot. We have online at cascountynd.gov backslash elections. So cascountynd.gov backslash elections. A full frequently asked questions detail sheet. That will hopefully take care of all your questions, all your needs and desires as to how we're going to proceed with this. Again, I can't stress enough the, uh, the situation we're in regarding elections. Obviously, we want to be able to go to a polling place. I do. You do. It's just something that's American. It's something that we've done and take pride in. The issue we're having is being able to staff them and being able to make sure people that attend are safe. Two things that we have to really account for. And, I, and we'll do our best to make sure everyone has a chance. Everyone's informed, and we'll be on the radio, we'll be in the paper, uh, to make sure you have every ability and every chance to get your ballot and vote. And lastly, the public can always find information on our county services at cascountynd.gov. You can also, of course, stay up to date with any changes which are happening by the hour at at symbol cascountygovnd on Twitter and Facebook. Mayor, that's all I have for you, and thank you again to everyone. Well, thank you, Chad. You brought out quite a few things that came out there. It's going to be an interesting election this time. Our last speaker is Clay County Commissioner Vice Chair Jim Haney. Jim? Thank, thank you, Mayor Mahoney. Good morning, everyone. Uh, across Minnesota today, there are currently 1,809 1, confirmed cases of COVID-19, and unfortunately, this includes 87 deaths. 42 of these confirmed cases are from Clay County. There's new guidance from the Department of Homeland Security, which addresses services at the Motor Vehicle Department. As of April 6th, the Clay County Motor Vehicle Department is working with dealerships to obtain vehicle titles and registration services. Minnesotans must renew personal vehicle registrations online at drive.mn.gov. That's drive, D-R-I-V-E, dot M-N, dot G-O-V, or by mail during this time. There are no extensions for expired vehicle registrations. Starting April 14th, the Clay County Motor Vehicle Department will offer drop-off tab renewal services from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Monday through Friday. Check out the Clay County website for more information. The Minnesota Department of Veterans Affairs have created additional benefits and procedures to help individuals and families. The Minnesota State Legislature voted to fund a special appropriation to assist veterans who may be financially impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. Veterans and their families may apply for a one-time $1,000 financial, financial relief grant. The purpose of this grant is to mitigate the negative effects and economic impact on veterans and their families. Applicants must be a veteran or a surviving spouse of a deceased veteran, a Minnesota resident, and have been negatively financially impacted by the COVID-19. 
Please contact the Clay County Veterans Service Officer by calling 218-299-5041 or apply online at the Minnesota Department of Veterans Affairs website. Again, we want to thank the public for all the efforts in following the guidelines for social distancing to slow the spread of COVID-19. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Commissioner Haney. That's it for today. Uh, per our recommendation by Desi, we're going to do this virtual next week so that we can do some things. And uh, two organizations, health organizations, may have some type of uh, PowerPoints or so other things they show us as we're beginning to get to a different point in this disease. The question is, surge, not surge, how high, high, low, what's going to happen? I am pleased that you worked very hard on the surge capacity. I think that came out with the governor's office, and it appears we're well prepared for whatever comes in the future. So thank you, everybody, for being here today, and those of you who are virtually here as well. And uh, next week, we'll do it all from the cloud. Thank you.